What? If a, when a murid looks at, him, at, at, his, at himself, uh? he is remembering or if he has forgotten death. What are the signs? What are the signs if you're remembering death and what are the signs that you've forgotten about death? For a murid. For a murid, it is forbidden to forget about your death. How many times we're saying, you go to sleep remembering death, death is under your pillow, and you wake up to know that your death is standing up right at you. For a murid, everything is going to remind you of death. You wake up from your bed to know, Ya Rabbi, thank you for giving me life. You're not remembering death? Yeah, when you wake up in Gauflet, when you wake up like a robot, when you wake up with your desires and your nerves running after this world, I have to wake up because I have to use the toilet. I have to wake up because I have to eat. I have to wake up because I have my job. You're not waking up remembering your Shahadat, remembering your Lord. If that is so difficult? It's not difficult. It is stubbornness. It is Gauflet, it is heedlessness. One thing that you can do, maybe this world is going to take over, you have your job to do and everything, you cannot consciously remember death. But that time everything will remind you of death, especially if you're a doctor. Allah, Allah. How can you not remember? Hmm. Does it mean that you're going to remember, oh, you, become, you sit down, you become depressed, and you have to... No, it doesn't mean that too. You understand? It can go. Everybody keeps up with the news. The news is not reminding us of death. Every day is reminding us of not one or two thousands dying every day. That is an open sign. It's not a sign, it's a book. What makes a man not to look at that and to remember death? What makes it? Something to think about. Are you looking at that to say, Astaghfirullah, Ya Rabbi, please don't let me be tested by that. Don't let me to pass like that. Are you taking that and then you're remembering, you're remembering your Allah. Not to look at the death and say, oh, I hope it doesn't happen to me. Oh no, definitely it's not going to happen to me. No, are you remembering that? Allah, Allah. Allah is powerful. It can happen to me. Astaghfirullah, please. You're thinking of that. You're seeing everything, the news is filled with that. You're going to sleep before you go to sleep in this way. What do we do? You make two sajda shukur. Not just to say shukur to Allah, but saying, promising Allah, if it is good for me, take my life before I wake up. If it is good for me, give my life back so I can become a better servant to you. This is two bookends, capping the beginning of the day and the end of the day. Throughout the day itself, what is making a man not to remember death? Not to remember that he's going to pass. It is not as if people here and they sunk in the pleasures. They're not really sunk in pleasures. I'm looking at so many people, they're miserable. They're not happy with anything. They say, oh, okay, you're not happy with sohbat, you're not happy with zikir, you're not happy with worship, at least be happy with something. Be happy, no, I see so many people, they're miserable. Shaitan tricked them ten times over. Because at least if you're happy with something, especially if you're a believer, that happiness turns to shukur. But they're teaching, no, 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 you cannot be happy with anything because that means that you are too in love with the dunya. No, you have to give shukur. You must be happy. Whatever that rahmat that Allah has shown you, you must be happy. And that happiness must come out. People in front of me, they're very miserable. Behind me, they're so happy. Yes. Huh? Because they equate now. To be religious means to be miserable. To be pious means miserable. Blah, 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 like that. Huh? Who remembers death the most? Holy Prophet, والسلام, And he is the one who smiles the most. Smiling. Why? 
men not smiling, women these days are even more, I look at them, want to throw up. And you are supposed to be the ones that Allah is saying, they have created the woman so that the men can find rest. Not just the dunya, the ahirat too. To become paradise. Paradise became paradise because of when Hawa Anna was created. I look at like this. What is that? Yeah. That's yeah, so why you find the old timers, old grandmothers, they're smiling. They have nothing to, they just smile. You look at them, you want to smile. So we lost this. So you're looking at the, you don't have to go out of your way to remind yourself of death. It is all around us. Everybody reads the news. That is enough. Don't look at the trees or don't look at the seasons. No need to look at the passing of the sun going up and down. That's too difficult for Ayur Zaman people. Too difficult. You have to spell everything out for them if they want to read. Most they don't want to read. Why is that? Because you are not close to your Lord. You're not conversing with your Lord. You're not speaking to your Lord. You're not remembering Him. You don't remember Him when good things are happening to you. You don't remember him when bad things are happening to you. People are running to memorize Quran, but they don't talk to their Lord. People are running to memorize duas, but every dua is a conversation between the Prophet and Allah. What is your conversation with your Lord? Then, that time if you're sincere, you say, okay, my conversation, my dua with my Lord, what am I always asking him? Oh, it's just asking. It's just, then you're going to say, oh, it's always about this dunya. It's always about this. I'm always complaining. How it is? And our Lord is doing everything to make us to be pleased, and we're always complaining. If you're not complaining, you're going to be happy. You look at something, you're going to say, subhanAllah, thank you. You're going to find every reason now. Yes. In the fire, you're going to find a reason to look at the garden. You understand? These days, of course, if you are young, a chef and he would say, it's understandable people who are young not to remember death so much. It hasn't become a reality. But he's saying for years, I've seen old people, both feet, they're inside the grave. And still they want birthday cake with candles. Hmm? Now we have to look, what, what can deaden our hearts? Because one thing in Islam now, among the Muslims, they take away the fear of Allah. They become like Christians. Everyone talking about love, 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 love. There's no more fear of Allah. Fear, oh, that's extreme. Oh, fear, that's Wahhabi. Since when? Look at Prophet how he feared his Lord. You're going to say that he's Wahhabi? Look at Hazrat Abu Bakr, Usman, Hazrat Ali, Hazrat Umar, Hazrat Abu Bakr. These are the people that they would, Astaghfirullah, they're not people. These are the most beloved ones of Allah that when they recite ayats describing the punishment of the grave, when they are praying, they would pass out. They would faint from the fear of Allah. Okay, we cannot do that. Don't try to pretend now. I'm going to see now someone pray. Ah, oh, they're passing out. Oh, I fear Allah. No, 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 no. It doesn't work like that. There is a sincere fear and there's a fear that you put on. How do we fear Allah? How do we fear the punishment of Allah? Yes, it is real. How do we fear that we're going to make Allah to be upset with us, to be angry with us? This is another thing. Because they're pulling us away and say, don't, don't, don't worry about that. Allah, uh, Allah uh, don't judge. Allah is not going to judge you. He's just going to forgive you. Mm. So you take away what? You take away the fear that you have from the Sultan. You take away the fear that you have from the Prophet, Yes. Every time talk about Prophet, oh, love, 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 love. Is this everything that the, that the holy companions of the holy prophet, they feel to the prophet والسلام, When he was washing them up, they couldn't even look at his face. 
Do they open that hadith? Only in tariqats they would do, but only in certain tariqats. Now they just say, ashk, 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 ashk. There were certain Sahabis, they don't even know. They, if you ask them, Shaykh Afghani is saying, they couldn't even describe how the Prophet ﷺ looked because they were so in fear of him and they looked down. They never see him, they never look at him. You understand? So you take away the fear of the Prophet, his awe, his greatness. You take it away. It's just like one of us. You become worse than, uh, than Wahhabis. It's just like one of us, those who are called Ahli Sunnah, become worse than Wahhabis. Ah, it's just like one of us, those who are calling themselves Ahli Sufi. You take away that, the greatness of the Prophet. You take away the Khilafat, the greatness of the ones who's representing the Prophet. You take away the greatness of the Allah and the Shaykhs. You take that away. A Shaykh is what? Ah, they play, just play Kawali 24 hours, or just smile and give candy and just rec and recite something and grant your du'as like that, just like Santa Claus. You take away the fear that people have with their parents. Everything in authority, there's no more. There's no more greatness now. You take away all of that. How are you going to have faith? How are you going to have faith and the belief that something is going to happen to you? And those who are running to have that fear, now, because there's no proper channel for that, one day they're going to go to one extreme, another day they're going to go to another extreme. One day they're going to fear Allah so much, they're going to be locked, they don't know what to do with it. Next day they're going to not have any fear in Allah, they're going to start cursing at Allah and His Prophet, correct or no? Now having a guide now, it is important. These days especially we need. These days especially we need. Because in the old days, you have that respect, that shame, that fear, at every level. Huh? You don't dare to say anything against your mother or against your father. You don't dare to say anything against your own teacher. If your father, your mother knows you say something against your teacher, they will punish you first. They are taught to kiss the hand. The respect, to put your head down and to kiss. A different form of sajda. But they say, no, 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 don't kiss. Don't kiss the hand, it's shrik. It's bidah. If I'm thinking, millions, now millions, they lost this tradition. And I'm shocked and surprised because it is alive in certain parts of the world, it's not alive. Now I'm shocked and surprised, I'm here. People, and we have a lot of people from Pakistan following us. And we say, do you have this tradition, kissing the hand? No. Your parents hand? No. Why? Yes? Okay, I can understand. I don't understand, but maybe I can say, okay, some Pakistanis, a lot actually, they don't like to have cats at home. They don't have, they don't like animals. I say, at least have cat, bruh. Cat is sunnah, you understand? <laughs> you call yourself the second Medina and there's no cats? <laughs> it's not allowed to have three cats. Oh, no, 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 no. Okay, at least now kiss hand. Kiss your father, your mother, say you have to kiss. Your teacher's hand, you have to kiss. These three, no? Your hoja's hand, you have to kiss. Then that is going to teach you to respect. They are, uh, keep quiet. They don't have that too. Uh, it's finished. Ah, Allah. But we have to know. Allah is still the ruler. Don't think this world has fallen into Jababira for 100 years. It's going to stay like this. Yeah. So. Ask yourself, if today I die, what's going to happen to me? If angel of death, this is not academic exercise. You're driving on the road, everyone fears, oh, no, 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 I, I hope I don't, don't, don't think of accident. Don't. But sometimes it comes to you, what if, what if, what if? How are you going to use it? May Allah protect me, yes, but how are you going to use it? You may say that, that is reminding you also, no? You see things happening, what if it happens? 
Now, instead of using that as a fear, as an anxiety, as something that gives you depression, turn it around to say that is uh, you reminding yourself to remind yourself of Allah. And then say, Ya Rabbi, please. Don't make me to go through that, I cannot carry it. But if you're making me to go through that, make sure, please, I'm asking you to give me faith to be able to carry that. Then you turn it around. You make that anxiety to be a way to get closer to your Lord, to give your Lord more, uh, for your Lord to give you more what? Satisfaction, sukun, peace. Although so many things are turning upside down, you have more peace because you're not living in fear of what's going to happen to you. You're living in fear of what Allah, how He's looking at you. You understand? What do you love? Are you saying to yourself, one day this love is going to be taken away from me? One day this love is going to change? This is not philosophy, this is reality. Then how am I going to do that? Maybe first stage you're going to have fear. Second stage, you have different. It has to be different. It has to be different. Look at your pleasures now. And say, this is going to go to. So now you're balancing yourself. You're not going to get drunk in that. You understand? You're going to look with, is good, but with some suspicion of that too. And you may have, because to be drunk in that is a very bad thing for believers, for murids. Then you realize, oh, I cannot even take a break, really. That's okay. Because this world is not, we are not here to take a break. This world is test. And if you're saying, oh, I go to a holiday, I go to this, I cannot even take a break, then say shukur, because Allah did not put you in a complete gauntlet. Especially now that we are here. Say that, it's okay, it's normal. That is just a zakat for some ease that is happening to us. And that time difficulties come to you, you're not going to, your heart is not going to be locked up, you're not going to be fear, you're not, because you run immediately to your Allah and you know what to do. Yes, that time you're going to check your heart first. You're going to check your heart. Why is my heart racing like this? Why is it out of control like this? We haven't even moved to tafakkur. Huh? Sitting down and saying, what are the most things that you fear that's going to happen to you? Sit and go through it. And then check yourself. Where is my faith now? Where is my faith? Where is my faith? Where is my faith? And then step, step by step ask to fix it. Hmm. When Our biggest fear as murids is that our shaykh is going to pass before we pass. Hmm. That was our biggest fear. And he did talk about it. And he says, this is a reality. I still remember it's inside a small masjid. And he was talking something. And certain things he said, we don't even want to think. But we must think because that is real. Oh, I don't even want to think things like that is going to happen to my parents or my children or this. But things like that happen to other people all the time, their parents and their children. You're not taking that fear and saying, no, 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 no it's not going to happen. You're taking that and you're asking your Allah. Then slowly, that will make your faith to become strong. Then slowly, it's not going to affect you so much. Then you're going to say, okay, I've already prepared for this. I thought about this. I asked for help. Now, when the situation comes, I know what to do. I'm not going to be stuck. You understand? Yeah. Wa amin Allahu tawfiq. May Allah forgive me and bless you, inshallah. Hurmatil Habib, Hurmatil Fatiha.